What is up and welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. On today's episode, we're gonna be learning how to make a leather camera bag. Now there's a specific reason we're learning to make this leather camera bag and it is as a thank you gift to the robot wolf. This mechanical canine has been helping us for a long time over on the Discord as one of our mods. She recently got a new camera and asked to commission a bag and damn it, our friends don't pay for things. We just make them, it's what we do. Know what else friends do? Friends, hit the subscribe button. I saw that only like 60% of you are subscribed to the show. It'd be really great for my analytics and for YouTube to see that you like us enough to subscribe. All right, without much further ado, let's level up this skill. So a lot of what we're gonna cover here today are things that we've covered previously in other videos. So if you're brand new to leatherworking, check out this playlist here and kind of start at the beginning and work your way up. Or just, you know, hold on and try to follow along. It won't be that hard. Now for starters, I need to make a template for this bag. Now the camera she got that will be going into this bag is, hold on a second, four and a half inches long, three and a half inches wide, and its height is three and a quarter. I will not be able to remember any of this while I'm making my template. So I went ahead and just milled up a block with those dimensions already. This way I can use this and as long as this fits into that space, we're good to go. I've also had my janky little camera bag here that I've had forever that I can kind of use to visualize how it'll all go together. So using my little fake camera here, I measured out what I thought would fit and cut them into these templates here. Now I'll list the measurements down below. It really isn't important. It depends on the size of your camera. I'm just going off of this. So all of it's pretty rough, but the basic way I'm thinking about it is, um, so in order to have enough room for this to fit in there, I cut this to be six inches tall by eight inches wide. After allowing for a seam allowance all along the edges, which is how much space I need to be able to sew, and then also a little bit of foam on the inside, that's gonna end up me having an inside space for everything to fit in of seven inches. Just for you kids paying attention at home, I gave myself a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which ends up being a half of an inch once you've gone all the way around, and then an additional half of an inch for the foam that I'm gonna put inside to protect the camera. So eight inches minus that one inches gives me seven inch space. Not that that matters because depending on what you're putting in your bag, that could change. This is all really kind of variable for whatever you want. That being said, if you think I'm an expert, hi, my name is Kit, this is Skilltree, and I have no idea what I'm doing, none. Will these templates work? I don't, I don't know, but before I waste the leather, I'm gonna cut this out of some foam just to make sure everything comes together easily. Oh, and as a quick aside here, the little rounded edges that I have put on here, um, they're just made with a quarter. I just put a quarter next to it, traced it, and cut that up. Looks professional. Again, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> And honestly, I could have shown me measuring this all out, but white paper on camera looks terrible and it would just be me moving my ruler around a bunch of times. You get it, figure out how big you need a thing, make a thing that big. I just basically go and cut this extra foam I have to match my templates. So this is the first time I am using foam to check my templates and I love this idea. I love it for two reasons. One, it's a really easy way to work with something that's of the same thickness I'm gonna be using so that I can see if my templates actually work. So to put this together, all I do is use a little contact adhesive where my seams will go. Then I just marry them together and see how everything fits. And while putting this together, I realized I made my flap a little bit too big. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a couple inches off of that so it lands where I want it to. And sure, this takes longer because I'm basically building a whole other thing, but I learned a whole bunch from it and didn't sacrifice any leather in doing so. For example, I had cut this side pocket way too big, so that came down a couple of inches. And since I'm going to be using this kind of whole back flap assembly as part of the, the overall frame of the thing, I realized that I actually have to kind of taper it as it comes to the front because that space gets taken up on the back and it just, it makes the front just too big. Things I wouldn't have been able to know with leather until I had put it all together and then it would have been a real pain in the ass to fix. That being said, I didn't have to glue it all together. I could have just stapled it and it would have taken like, I don't know, five minutes tops to put together. But check it out, it's a little bag. Like it, little side pocket works and that's gonna be on both sides of this thing. It's got a flap that opens up. Picture it with like a, a handle and a strap. We're good to go. So armed with this planning and some updated templates, it's time to bust out our leather. Now most of this is gonna be made out of this four ounce leather that I carefully cut all the shapes out of. Once I have all of my pieces gathered together, I also decided to cut the gussets out of a thinner two ounce leather so it has a little bit more flexibility and movement in the pockets. And one gusset I just cut to a width of two inches for that front pocket and a width of inch and a half for the two side pockets. 
Also, don't mind the wardrobe change. It's going to take a few days for me to get this done. It's a very busy week. Anyways, once all of my pieces are all set and gathered together, I'm going to go through the standard procedure of treating all of the edges with my edge beveler and my slicker. I also take this opportunity to run my stitch groover all around the sides just to give my stitches a place to go once I put them in. They're going to be able to lay down in that groove and make it a little more flat and clean looking. All right, so this is my first time making something like this, and I'm trying to figure out the order of operations. The way I think it will happen is I'm going to go ahead and tool it now first, then punch all my holes and prep it for sewing, and then color it before I actually put it all together. Now for my tooling, I'm using this little wolf symbol here as she is the robot wolf, and doing the standard thing of wetting down my leather, tracing the image onto it with a stylus, then going over that tracing with a freshly sharpened swivel knife. Once happy with that, I go back over the whole thing with my bevel tool just to make it stand out. Okay, so with that part all taken care of, we've actually come to the most tricky part of the whole build. Everything else up till now, we've covered in other videos before. But now we have to figure out how to put a gusset onto this. So a gusset, using this little model here, is basically this part here that connects like the front of the bag to the back of the bag. And the reason this is tricky is because I have to punch my lace holes, but the lace holes on the front of the bag and the back of the bag have to match exactly with the ones on the gusset. This way, as you sew it, the gusset will wrap around perfectly and be shaped the way it needs to be. And obviously that's really hard because if you're off a little bit, everything's gonna end up wonky. But I think I figured out a way to get this done. All right, so what I'm thinking of doing is measuring each one of these panels, the, the front and the back panel here, exactly in half. Then starting at that halfway point, I'm gonna use my four hole punch to just walk along my stitch line, counting them as I go. Doing this also lightly marks up the leather so I can keep track. So the way I kept track of this in my head is starting from center, it took me five little movements to get to the corner here, then an additional five with my two hole punch to get around the corner, and then finally eight more to finish it up. And then I did the exact same thing with the gusset, finding its center, and then starting at that center point, doing the same amount of punch movements as I did for the other side. In theory, this should make everything match up perfectly. We're using this as a measuring device. I hope. So with my measurements all figured out, I went ahead and started punching my holes. Now for strength and the ease of holding everything together, I decided to punch my corner holes larger so that they can hold the rivets. This is gonna give the bag extra strength when it's being pulled open, and it's also gonna give me kind of a, a leg up on starting the thing because of that corner is already gonna be in place. Now I of course went and did the same thing for all the rest of the gussets, like the one for the pockets and all that. Now since I needed the holes to transfer onto like the larger pieces themselves for things like the pockets, I just kind of used those pocket plates as a template and put them where they needed to go. Then I used the pencil to mark through all of those holes and then punch them. So now I can be sure the front plates of the pockets, their gussets, and the backing, which is on the actual body of the bag themselves, all match up exactly. Also, this is another occasion where building this thing ahead of time in foam came in really handy. Basically, I needed to figure out how far down to put these little pockets here, and since it was already put together and I already kind of did that legwork, I was able to just kind of measure this space here. Then punch all the holes for that little pocket right where they go. All right, so we're almost ready to dye this and then start stitching it together, but first I wanted to make some little buckle assemblies so that everything closes first. Now I'm not gonna go over how to make buckles. I did a whole episode on just that here. Now off camera, I also made all the parts that are gonna actually go onto the little handle on the top of the bag. I'm not gonna go over that here because I covered it in detail during my spider bag build here. I'll leave a timestamp down below to where it is in that video in case you want to see. I also cut a few simple straps here that are going to go together to become the little shoulder strap to carry it with. As you can see, this just consists of two 18 inch long straps or about three quarter inches wide and another 18 inch one that tapers from one inch to two inches to give more space to carry on your shoulder. And all of these are just going to be put together with D-rings, which you'll see after we've done this dyeing step. Speaking of dyeing, it is time to add color to our project. Now I've had a lot of you in the comment section mention in other videos where I've dyed leather that if I actually moisten the leather first, the dye comes out much more even. So I'm gonna give that a try this time. Let's see how it goes. So I just evenly moisten everything with a wet sponge and then go in and apply my dye. For this, I'm just using this nice light brown. And I gotta say, it's still drying right now, but already it honestly does look way more even than I usually get. Usually I get a lot of streaks and lines and you can see what direction I, I put the dye on. But right now it's looking super promising. And once the color has fully cured, I'll hit it with Rosaline and all that good stuff to seal it. Now my joy with how this is coming out is only tamped down a little bit by the fact that I, I, have, to, I have to sew all of this. I'm, 
I'm not a fan of hand stitching. Dear God, I need a sewing machine. One thing before I do start sewing though, is I wanna put on the hardware and all the little straps. Just making sure I get all the pieces that are gonna be hard to reach later on before I actually put everything together. Except for the handle, I'm not quite sure yet how this flap is gonna land and I want that handle to be directly in the center, but that'll be easy enough to get to since the flap opens up. To attach the actual shoulder strap, I'm gonna be using this little metal ring attachment that I just attached to the sides with some rapid rivets. I love how these things look. These are really slick looking. All right, I put it off long enough. Time to sew. I'm gonna start nice and easy with the handle here. It's pretty simple construction. I just take this strip of leather with the D-rings already on it, apply some contact adhesive, and then fold it in on itself. Then to bulk out the handle, I wrap it with a separate piece of leather and use a simple baseball stitch to hold it into place. Now to put everything together, I'm gonna to be using a saddle stitch. If you're unfamiliar with the saddle stitch, check out this video here where I cover how to do it. Now to help me get started, I did punch those rivet holes earlier on, so I'm gonna go ahead and set those in place just to help me hold the gusset to the material as I start to work. Now as you see, I'm basically lining up the gusset holes with the holes of this little front panel here. As I sew it, the gusset has to follow around all the little curves. I'm super shocked at how easily this kind of just pulls around those corners. And when I finished up, it worked out so perfectly that even my rivet holes lined up. I can't believe how good that worked. Like for how stiff the leather feels, I didn't think it would bend around so easily, but it totally worked out in my little scheme to get all the holes to match up. Man, I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm gonna uh, give myself one of these. That being said, before I kind of put this back section on it, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put all the pockets on because now the back is open and it'll just be easier for me to reach in there and get what I need. And to do the pockets, I do the exact same thing, just, you know, smaller. I start by sewing the gusset onto the pocket fronts and then sewing the whole assembly onto the bag. Just make sure you pay attention to know which way your gusset has to lie on when first starting so that you don't have it all turned around the wrong way. Okay, do you know how sometimes you think something's gonna be really hard, but it actually turns out to be super easy? This is not that. This is super hard to do. But normally, when you have like the two pieces you're trying to sew together, you have the holes match up, and then you just kind of run the needle through both of them and then run them back through the other way. The problem with this is the holes don't line up because it's like folding in on itself, and the area is too small to fit my hands into, so I have to go one hole at a time. So go out one, into the next one and then turn it around and then like do it separately. So it turns out to be four separate holes all in a really tight space. Doable, sure, of course. Pain in the ass, 100%. Wolf, you're lucky I love you. It is coming out nice though. I do like how it's coming out, but hot damn is this a pain in the ass. All right, complaining session over. Uh, actually, it isn't that bad. If you have some time to spare and just kind of pour some whiskey and have some nice music on, it's just a little monotonous. But check that out. That first pocket is on there. I've got the other two side ones to do as well. They're much less holes, so it won't be as bad. Okay, now before I put on these little side pockets here, I'm actually putting a snap on the top of them. To do this is simple. The snaps come in like four pieces. Two of them are for the male part of it, and two of them are for the female part. All you do is use the recommended striker and anvil to lock these into place. Then I install the gusset around the front plate. Then I attach that along with this flap to the main body here, forming the closure to actually shut this little pocket. And from here, I just kind of got into a pattern of sewing, sewing so long, like every stitch was a life age of this world. Call it madness or transcendence, eventually I began to see through the weft and weave of time itself until all knowledge was available to me. And the true dark things that rule all of existence came into view and I finally understood. Oh, I'm done. I did it. I, where was I? Oh, I, I did it. It looks good. It's a, it's a bag. There's a lot, there's a lot of stitching. I've made no secret of my disdain for hand stitching. That being said, look how good these stitches came out. Like, this is probably the nicest hand stitching I've ever done. I do understand the hand stitching. If you kind of have the patience and time and you can get into a flow, you can like transcend this mortal coil and see beyond the veil. Long story short, it comes out real nice. There is one issue I'm having with this though. You see how like, while it's closed, 
the very edges of the top here kind of pop out a little bit. I don't like that, but I think I have a solution for it. All I'm gonna do is put some holes in the gusset and then thread some quarters through that to kind of give it a shape puckering in on itself. Next, I lock in the strap and buckle assemblies that I had made up earlier. I just use rivets to connect these straps and buckles. For one final step, I needed to put on the handle. And this again, I just connected with some rivets. And with those last few hammer strikes, BAM! Check this bag out! Look at how dope this came out! It opens, it closes, has ample space, two cool little side pockets, and a nice travel strap for when you're on the go. I would totally buy this thing if I saw it in the store. This is probably one of the nicest leather projects I think I've put together to date. Granted, it was difficult with the sewing, but honestly, it wasn't that bad. Like, I got it done in a weekend. In one weekend, with a very little bit amount of leather, you can have a really nice quality product. Now, since there's going to be, like, camera in here and stuff, I might still line the inside with, like, a, a craft foam or, or something like that to keep it safe. I'll talk to Wolf on that one, what she would like inside here. But yeah, I am super proud of this. If you like this design, I'm gonna be posting the templates in my website, so you can go purchase it there, or if you're one of my Patreon members, you get it for free. Speaking of my Patreons, I would like to thank these lovely people here for making this show possible. Honestly, without their support, I wouldn't be able to do any of this, so I really do appreciate it. If you would like to support this show and help it grow, why don't you consider joining the Patreon below? That all rhymed. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but I dig it. And of course, thank you for being a moderator over the Discord, Wolf. I really appreciate it, and I hope you like your bag. Gremlin, you're next. Oh, one more heads up for you guys before I leave. You may have noticed I didn't post a quick skill this past Tuesday. Originally, I had started doing the ton of two skills a week once COVID hit, and there was a lot more time. And now that I'm working, like, a full-time job again, um... That's a thing that I can't really support. I was afraid that doing both of them at once was actually making neither of them as good. It was kind of struggling and I wasn't able to make like bigger projects like this. This is way more complex than I've been able to cover in a while. So I made the decision to go back to kind of one longer one a week. I think that way I'm gonna be able to focus on making kind of cooler or better quality projects without like dying over here. But that's not all because my team has been working on kind of something Awesome, I'm really, a couple something awesome that I'm really excited to show you coming into the brand new year. Still kind of a secret for now, but stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, want to give me some of that like and love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. And in the meantime, keep leveling up, you. Wow, you watched all the way to the end screen. You must have really liked that video. If you like that one, you're gonna love one of these two down here. In fact, you'll probably like everything on this channel. Why don't you hit that subscribe button so you know when I release new content? It's alright, I can, I can wait here. You can just hit it whenever you're ready. I'll just, I'll just sit here. <laughs>